I spent the last three years observing what all the top content creators are doing to make millions in their business. And I took note of three noticeable but not commonly spoken about creator millionaire habits. And if you ignore it, you could have the loyal audience, you could have great content, but if you don't follow these three habits, you might not have the lifestyle, the freedom, and the autonomy that these creators do. So if you're a content creator that's serious about building an audience for the years to come, I wanna make this video for you to become aware of those three content creator millionaire habits. So Jules, are you just using Bard or Google to find these common success habits and turn into a video? Look, hand on heart, you are not gonna find these tips on Google and let me show you how. So over the years, I've added some of the top content creators to my email swipe file, three years to be exact. So I've got three years of data in this email inbox and you can clearly see the people who've exploded the last three years are because they're basically synced up with these three habits. I got this video from today from a subscriber, Tom, who asked basically how can you make a bit more money? And doesn't matter if you're starting out like Tom or you're really experienced, the question that's in all of our minds is how do I make more money? The problem though is that if you're kind of ADHD like me, it's really easy to just jump into stuff without really thinking things forward. For example, is shiny object syndrome also your worst enemy like me? And if it is, let me know with the thumbs up. <laughs> and to answer Tom's question and to bring back to the premise of the video, what are the top three creator millionaire habits? Well, let me walk you through it. And Tom, if you're watching, pay attention to this one. They focus on chasing skills and not opportunities. So if I could wind back time, I would just tell myself, bro, like stop buying all those courses from those webinars. And at the time I was very fresh, very naive to internet marketing, of course. I wasn't really exposed to what's out there and I was really intoxicated by just making more money. That's all their big hooks are, right? First of all, a product that promised to build a business in 10 minutes after watching a demonstration of them building a website in 10 minutes. That's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> Then I thought Amazon FBA was the answer. Then I did some Facebook ads for local businesses because chatbots were hot at the time. And I could keep going on and on, but you want to know what the common pattern between all these opportunities were, was that they all offered you the easy shortcut, the solutions, the templates, everything to make your life easy. But you know what that actually means in the long run? What this actually means is that you're not actually learning foundational skills as a creator. You know, like revenue generating skills. You just handed the easy button but you're not really learning anything that's gonna make you money as a business owner. And the number one skill that I see in all these top content creators' emails, in their content, and everything else, and so the one skill that's helping go from $5 an hour emails on Upwork to then you know, $15 million in client results, you wanna know what the skill is. It's a skill of copywriting, which in fancy language is, how do I get someone's attention? How do I get them to stop and read? And how do I get into a state of a buying frenzy? Now, obviously I'm pretty biased because this is what I do for a living, but look at all the top content creators. They're not just using ChatGPT to write them copy. They're using it for Springboard. They're using it for ideas. And then they're using their own skills and expertise to make it better. I am going off on a bit of a tangent here, but the key thing is here, not chasing opportunities, but chasing skills particularly revenue generating skills, maybe like writing copy or understanding a funnel or understanding how to close high ticket leads. These are the things. And if you were broke and if you were made bankrupt, if you put in jail, like no one can take these away from you, but Amazon could come along and take away your business. Google could come along and start your YouTube channel. If you don't have the skills in place to like rebuild, then you've got nothing on the foundation. Like that 10 minute business website thing, that traffic strategy might be gone in two years, but you can't take away the skills and that's why I'm saying these top content creators, they're chasing skills and not opportunities. Now it's all great to be really skilled and stuff, but what's that second habit which makes it actually work? Well, what I noticed was that these guys don't get easily distracted. And I'll explain what I mean by distracted. So of course they don't get distracted by shiny objects and new opportunities, just like tip number one. And this is the second part, and so many experienced entrepreneurs fall into this, is that they don't get distracted when things are already working super well. And I don't, I don't want to say what's narcissistic in here pulling in my experience when I'm not a millionaire content creator, but hopefully my perspective from my own mistakes can make it feel relatable for you too. So I've built email lists for clients, I've monetized the list, but I've really struggled to do it for myself. Last three years, publishing consistent content is because I get distracted easily. Like I like the shiny object and I recognize that. I started out like, oh, LinkedIn, it's got legit business owners. Let's start there. I heard Facebook groups are an awesome way to build a community. Let me start doing two-step posts. Oh, I saw that Twitter's a really good, easy way to bring in new leads to build a list. Let's go try that. <laughs> and now here I am on YouTube. Oh God, Jules, okay. 
Get your shit together, mate. Get your shit together. Right, I'm at least I'm aware of the problem though, right? But here's the thing, like a lot of the top content creators that you'll see, they'll have one primary thing. A lot of them do have ADD, so they do have a second thing. But for the most part, they've got one primary thing. And all of them know by adding more stuff onto your plate actually splinters your attention. And let me give you a really good example. Now, I'm speaking on behalf of them. This is an observation. So Wes, if you're listening to this, just know that. So one of my past clients, Wes McDowell, he runs this YouTube channel over here. And he also had a podcast to jump in on, which was called The Profitable Website. Now, what happened was that Wes had a YouTube channel and a podcast. And he decided to pull the podcast. Like, why would he do that? I don't know the real motivations, but I can now see his videos are way better. His growth is going up. A lot of his videos are taking off because he's not putting more on his plate. Like all of his attention is on YouTube. That's the core part I want to share with you is that shiny objects distract us and the top content creators, they know how to push them away. Like, does anyone even remember Clubhouse anymore? And this is the second big mistake that I see experienced entrepreneurs fall into and that's stopping what's already working because it's boring. Let me give you a quick example. So email marketing, it's been consistently working the last 20 plus years. Look at this stat from HubSpot. For every $1 that you put in, you're gonna get roughly between 36 and $38 out. Compare that with social media, it's between like two and three times more profitable. But I've still seen clients who go like, I wanna go try out TikTok. I wanna go try out YouTube Shorts because it's getting lost attention. It's fun, it's sexy. But all the pros know that sticking with the thing that's actually working are the ones who are still around. And this goes back to my email spy file. They're still consistently mailing their list. But sometimes it can get boring. Sometimes it become a headache. And that's why all the smart content creators know that the power is in the list. It's consistently worked and they don't want to get distracted from that. But it's a super pain in the ass to manage, which is why as a business, I've decided to go into this business of list management. I know it's a massive headache for list owners. And sometimes the clients will have to remind them like, don't go chasing shiny objects. Like, look at this, email has pulled in more sales than it did from your Facebook ads, than it has from the Facebook group. Like, we should be focusing on this core thing, which is email. Please don't get distracted. So as a content creator, what's that habit? Well, don't go chasing shiny objects and stick with what's currently working to bring consistent revenue, which is email. Like, look how many emails these people are sending. They know that email is a revenue engine for their business. Why would you stop doing that? All right, so I'm getting a little bit dogmatic here. Let's get back onto the theme of the video. What are the top three content millionaire habits? We're up to the third one now. And this one is super insidious because it fools you into thinking you've made it. And then what happens is that you spiral down and then you become complacent. Well, maybe that's just me. So this is the third habit, not just in this list, but with every top content creator. They're always hungry, even when their belly is full. And this is hands down one of the most wise pieces of advice my mentor gave me. He's like, Jules, just because you're doing well now, don't slack off, like keep going. You're always going to be hungry when your belly's full. I can hear that so clearly with his smoky, raspy voice. Unfortunately, I did get complacent when my belly got full. I remember when I first escaped after COVID from being a gym instructor for like five, six years, and I more than doubled what I was making. I was living by the beach. I thought I was a king, making 4K a month, like not much at the time, but I thought I was doing really well. I took some days off. I wasn't prospecting. Every and then, you know, things sort of slipped in. I wasn't prospecting every day. I wouldn't follow up with that lead just because I thought I'm really busy. Basically, I just wasn't as hungry as when I was absolutely broke and dire to change things up. And this cycle has actually happened a few times. In August, 2022, I thought I was a digital nomad making great money, but same sort of thing. I got complacent when my belly was full. And this pattern absolutely shits me and I know I'm not the only one. And maybe you can relate with this as well. And when I look through this white file, when I look at all the top content creators, they're the ones that are still pushing hard like they're broke. Even though that 99% of all their peers, their family think they're probably the most successful person they know, they still keep pushing. They're still hungry even when their belly is full. And that's something that's extremely hard to do for the long term. So do you want to know what smart business owners do? Well, they're lazy. They basically pay someone else to be responsible for that. So they are hungry about results. That way someone else can look after it. They can keep it making money and they don't have to keep thinking about it all the time. One of those things is an email list. And I know this is a massive headache for a lot of people. On top of that, I also know from experience there are four power profit email levers that pretty much any list owner needs for healthy, responsive, 
and profitable list. Now, if you don't want to get complacent like my backstory, what you can do is you can peek over my shoulder, you can look at the exact email strategy that I've used to help bring in $15 million in client results. The way I've done this is I've created a complete video guide here on YouTube that I know is going to give my editor an absolute heart attack. It's meaty, it's detailed, it's got absolutely everything you need to build and monetize a list in 2023. If you're curious, it's going to be in the link in the description down below, or it's going to be over here. Or if the editor wants to do this, or it's going to be over here.